Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. Just want to thank you all for joining us once again in our studies through 1 Corinthians verse by verse. We're in chapter 6. Something interesting uh, happened to us here in southeastern Oklahoma. Just a few days ago, we, we actually had a F1 tornado touchdown in the community. It didn't do a whole lot of damage. It uh, almost blew us off our feet trying to run to the cellar. So we're just now getting everything kind of back to normal and we're gonna continue on in our studies. If you're one of the hurting Christians who has been devastated by legalism, law, uh, the demands of the law in your life, I recommend you watch the last video that I published. Uh, if you're looking up and waiting for our Lord's return, as many of us are, I also recommend that you look at my recent video that I published on the uh, spring timeline, which includes the dates May 14 and May and June 15. And so thank you once again for your participation with us in our study. We're going to be looking at some very interesting verses, particularly one which deals with the subject matter of law keeping as a principle of life. I just want to point out before we get into our study that when Paul, we're about to read Paul say that all things are lawful, but not all things are profitable or not all things are expedient, not all things are beneficial. And there's a reason for that. And this verse will sort of set the precedent or set the course for the rest of our study throughout the entire epistle of 1 Corinthians. We've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. All our sins were forgiven. We stand before Him holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in His sight. As you may have, uh, have saw through our studies in 1 John, we have a new man that cannot sin. We have an old man that's all it does is sin. And so uh, the law actually performs no righteous function in the believer's life. There's a very good reason why we're not under law, but, we're, but that we're under grace, and that is because the righteous new man in us, the, it cannot be improved upon. We're to reckon ourselves dead to sin, but alive unto God in Christ, and the new man cannot be improved upon. We're to function out of that new man We've seen in previous studies that Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to those who believe. And so if you are one of those hurting Christians who has been devastated by others heaping responsibilities on you that God never equipped nor intended that you bear, then uh, I think that you're going to like what we continue to study here in 1 Corinthians. So thank you again for joining us. And let's go right to the text and, and see what the Holy Spirit has to say to us. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? Saints, righteous ones in Christ. And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters, the most minute matters, uh, that's within the body of Christ. Uh, know you not, uh, verse 3, that we shall judge angels. How much more things that pertain to this life. And uh, I talked a little bit about this in the last video, how I believe that that is our, there's witness, our testimony, our witness is written all over these verses. It makes no sense whatsoever for us to be involved in a relationship with God and one another by grace and then take our matters to a legal court and be a testimony to the world that, well, we're really not under grace. We're really under law. Paul says he speaks this to uh, their shame. Uh, is there not uh, a wise man among you? Is there not just one wise man among you that's that's uh, would be able to judge between his brethren? 
but no brothers brother goes to law uh, with brother you could uh i guess say sister against sister and that before the unbelievers the unfaithful the non-righteous okay and i talked a little bit about how our legal system is nothing anywhere close to christian because we can't bring up christian faith our faith the christian principles in a court of law So it's utterly a fault among these believers there at Corinth because they are, you know, go to law one with another. Why not rather be defrauded? And so that's kind of where we were at in our last study. Uh, the idea being that we should rather suffer ourselves to be defrauded rather than to become a testimony that's contradictory to the very faith that we that we live and that we exercise in the body of Christ. Uh, so we're defrauding our brethren, actually. Okay, by taking one another to court. And I pointed out that that's not saying that we can't go to court and sue someone because they stole your patent. Okay, it's it's... Verse 9, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? The unrighteous. Okay? Uh, you stand before God holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in His sight. You are not unrighteous. You're not a righteous Christian that... God sometimes considers unrighteous. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, okay, or thieves, or covetous, okay? When we read these things and we go, well, maybe, maybe that's me sometimes, you know, nor drunkards, well, sometimes I, take an, I drink an occasional beer or I take an occasional shot of whiskey and maybe sometimes I get drunk because something really bad happened to me in my life. So now I, I'm, I fit that context and that's me and I will not inherit the kingdom of God. I may not inherit the kingdom of God. I'm hoping I'll inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 11, and such were some of you. This is what you were. All right, dearly beloved, this is what some of you were, but you, you, were, you are washed, you are sanctified, okay? You are justified, that is, you're made righteous in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're not made righteous by any action on your part. Justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. That's what the text is saying. Our bodies are members of Christ, they're members of one another. Our relationship with Him is one that is based upon grace, not law. Verse 12, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any, and I wanna talk a little bit about that. Dearly beloved, please listen to me. It has to be that we're that all things are lawful. Why is that? Because regrets are the heart of atheism. We all have them. All things work together for the good, or God lied. You're not your old man. That's not who you are in Christ. The old man, the new man conflict was actually designed, purposed, determined by our God so that you would see the contrast between the old, ugly, rotten self, sinful self, and the new life that you have in Christ, the new nature. Okay, those regretful, so I put that in quotes, those past sins were all atoned for. He's, he, was, he forgave you of all your sins. You have nothing to offer as a further sacrifice but your new man, holy righteous unto God, that's your sacrifice unto God, a daily reckoning yourself dead to sin but alive unto God 
in Christ. You are as righteous as Christ is in the new man. Rest in Him. And stop siding with Satan telling you that you've got to do something to appease an angry God. Why would you want to side with Satan? When God has absolutely nothing against you and law has no righteous function whatsoever in the believer's life. Why? Because you cannot improve upon something that is perfect. The new man, the righteous new man, he can't become any more righteous than what he already is. Folks, you're either righteous or you're not. Okay? That's why all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. Not all things are profitable. Not all things are beneficial. This, ups, this verse upsets many a Christian. You know, they, they want to argue, well, you know, all things are lawful. Well, that means you can just go out and you can just live however you want. You can do whatever you want to do and still go to heaven. And dearly beloved, I'm, I'll tell you, without apology, you can live any way you want as a believer in Christ who's been made the righteousness of God in Christ, whose sins have been fully forgiven. You can live any way you want and you're going to go to heaven. Okay, you, you don't go to heaven because of what you do, what you think, or how you feel. You go to heaven because, because Christ died in your place. That's it. Okay, and if you want to take the old man for a ride, well, you know, I'm, I'm not going to invite you to do that. But I will tell you that if you do take that old man for a ride, or every time you do take that old man for a ride, you must agree with Paul, just as, as Paul stated in Romans chapter 7, it's not I that sins. Not I. It's not I that sins. Why would Paul say it's not I that sins when, well, we know that if we say that we have no sin, the truth is not in us. What Paul is saying when he says it's not I who sins, his seed abides in us and we, we cannot sin because we've been born of God. Yes, all things are lawful, but all things are not beneficial. But I will not be mastered over by anything, by anyone. Okay? Anyone. That's, in the, that's the singular in the Greek. Anything I will not be ruled by, ruled over, mastered by anyone or anything. Well, of course, you know, because the new man isn't ruled over or mastered by any one thing. There is nothing that can change the fact that you've been made a new creation in Christ. Now live like it. We know as believers in Christ that we have died to the law in order that we might bear fruit unto God. We know from Scripture, we know we were told by God to reckon ourselves, it's the first command given in Romans 6, 11, reckon ourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto Christ, unto God in Christ. You see there the, contra the old man and new man being contrasted. Reckoning is a daily ongoing process which prevents us, our old man, from causing us to be dependent De debilitated, defeated, frustrated, and feeling like a failure. If you go to church and all you hear is someone badgering you to try harder, to try to clean up the flesh, clean up the old man, when the flesh profits nothing, and when the law, the law is the very strength of sin, I spent some time talking about the reality of spiritual adultery, being married or a spouse to Christ while having an endless flirtatious affair with the law. Legalism. And there are two extremes in the Christian life. There's legalism and there's licentiousness. You can either go one way or another. Just know that, that, that all sin is unrighteousness, but you've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. And the law absolutely has no function in the, in the believer's life as far as attaining to righteousness or maintaining righteousness on a human level. Okay? 
All the law does, folks, is condemn. That's all it's going to do. If you're living as a believer in Christ under the law, you're going to be feeling guilty a lot, a whole lot of the time. You're not going to have peace. You're not going to have rest. You're not going to have joy. If that is what you desire, is peace, rest, joy in the Holy Spirit, you need to understand that the law has serves absolutely no purpose in the believer's life who's already been made the righteousness of God in Christ because of the obedience of Christ. That's where we're at in our study. So thank you all. I love you all. I truly do. Uh, rest in Him. And until next time, this is Steve. Thank you for watching.